Oh, peasant, my musket runneth dry. There we go, thank you very much. Hey, peasant, my musket is dry again. <laughs> you okay. gave me an empty musket. <laughs> Well, hello everybody out there. Welcome to another Weapons of the 18th Century video on the 11 Bang Bang channel. I'm your host, Ethan Woods. And today we're doing something that has been highly, highly requested. That is Brown Bass versus Charlottesville. Which one was the better musket? So as you can see here, we've got our two guns and small disclaimer, we're using the long land pattern Brown Bass because, well, to be quite frank, we don't have a short land pattern to use. So there is that. But let's go ahead and let's just kind of account for size. Now with a short land pattern, this gun is going to be just about as long as the Charleville. They're gonna be about the same length. And this is Old Char, the 1766-68, uh, 69 caliber French Charleville. And this is the long land pattern Brown Bass, 75 caliber British gun. So let's talk about size. So even with the short land pattern, which I've handled quite a few of them before, the Charleville is a much, much lighter gun. It's a much slimmer, sleeker gun. The reason for this being because of what was used to fire these things. So the reason for the size difference and the weight is because the Brown Bess, which I'll just pull it up right here, is as you can see, I'll go ahead and I'll show you both these barrels. These guns are both unloaded. There's nobody behind the camera, but as you can see there, there is quite a bit of a difference between those two barrels. One is a 75, one is a 69. The reason for that is, is because the British did not have uh, access to higher quality powders. And so they had to, in order to keep the power up with the Charleville, they had to make a bigger ball. So they could get, they could kind of equal out more mass for less uh, speed uh, to still make it a very effective weapon. Now, the Charleville doesn't have to have that more mass because they had better powder. That's why I say to get an accurate French powder, usually Swiss 1.5F is a pretty close equivalent to the French musket powder. So, which one's more powerful? Well, between these two muskets right here, I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt that this brown vest is a lot more powerful than the Charleville. The reason for that being is barrel length for one and 75 caliber versus 69 caliber. 69 caliber ball coming out of the Brown Bess versus 63 to 64 caliber ball coming out of the Charleville. So yes, the Brown Bess is more powerful. Not only that, let's talk about versatility. The Brown Bess is going to be more versatile whenever it comes to what kind of loads you can shoot out of it. Uh, the reason for this being is when you're loading buck and ball, you can load buck and ball in the Charleville. However, I'm gonna turn these around right quick. This is, once again, a 75 caliber musket. So therefore, you can actually kind of get them to go down the barrel a little easier. So I will give power and versatility really to the Brown Bess. It is a more powerful gun and it is a more versatile gun. Now let's talk about ease of use. So, these two guns, when, it, when you're talking about ease of use and how easy it is to use something, you kind of got to break it down to how easy is it for the average Joe to pick up one of these things. You have a very minimum amount of time you can, in which you can train them. Which one is he going to be able to learn on faster? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give that to the Charleville. And let me explain to you why. Let me pull these both up here right quick. Okay. You'll notice on the Charleville we have these barrel bands holding the barrel on. You notice the brown bass, you do not. You have pins. A big part of good musketry and making sure that your guys' weapons can stay up and functional is weapons maintenance. And I'm just going to tell you right now that the Charleville is way easier to maintain than the brown bass. Simply for the fact that you can just pop barrel bands off, take off the breech nail, and the barrel comes right off. Whereas the Brown Bess, guys were actually 
specifically instructed not to take their barrels off because they were afraid they'd lose the pins. That was an armorer's level of expertise to take the barrel off. So they could not get the brown bess as clean as you could get a Charleville. Now, not only that, let's talk about something that goes into a little bit more on the accuracy side of things. But before we go on to that, I will just say, I'm gonna give ease of use to the Charleville because of the barrel bands and because of what I'm about to talk about here, which also rolls into accuracy. This right here, see that? Nice little front sight. On the Brown Bess, you have, see here, get that off, your front barrel uh, bayonet lug, which this one is kind of an issue we had with a military heritage gun. One of the main ones I think we, or one of the worst problems we've had so far was this uh, barrel lug wasn't on straight, it's kind of candid. But that is your front sight for the Brown Bess. And before anybody starts going on about, well, it's not actually a front sight, yes. There were manuals at the time that actually stated this as being a front sight. But when you put on your bayonet, you cannot use it. You cannot see that front sight. So at that point, you are kind of guessing where you're shooting at. Whereas on the Charleville, we still have a front sight we can see over the bayonet. So for accuracy, I'm gonna give it to the Charleville. Not only do we have this front sight, but you also have to remember the Charleville shoots a much better powder. So it makes it a lot more accurate. You've seen on my Charleville accuracy video where I actually put two headshots in a target at 150 meters away with this gun. So ease of use, accuracy, those are gonna go to the Charleville. Now let's talk about something else. There's really two categories to this one and that is durability and reliability. So durability, what are we talking about when we talk about that? Well, we're talking about how well the gun will hold up to time, how well you can preserve it, how well it's going to fire over and over and over again. And I gotta think about this one for a little bit because there's really not a whole lot of difference between the two and the durability aspect. Aside from the barrel bands on the Charleville are going to make it much, much more uh, rugged for bayonet charges and like I said you can take that barrel off of the Charleville a lot easier so you can potentially go and lube it up real good put some oil on there and that's gonna help protect the steel or the iron excuse me so I would give durability to the Charleville now let's talk about reliability well they're both flintlock muskets so there's not a whole lot that's a uh, difference there. I think one of the main things is on the brown bass is it has a larger hammer. And so that's gonna give the brown bass probably a little more of an edge in the reliability aspect. But then again, with a Charleville, it has a very interesting breech plug on it. It's drilled out a little more on the bottom of the breech plug on the Charleville, where it makes this nice little channel for your fire to go down. Uh, when you're shooting it, so that kind of could help. I'm gonna give reliability a draw on both these because they're both about the same. All right, now let's move on to another one, bayonet fighting. Which one's the bayonet, best bayonet fighter out of these two? Well, first of all, mind you, this is a long land pattern. So you got a little bit more reach on the long land pattern, okay? But that being said, with a short land pattern, you're gonna be pretty much the same length, if not a little shorter than the Charleville, so I'm not gonna count length really in the bayonet aspect. But what I will count is, once again, that durability for bayonet fighting, which again, is gonna to go to the Charleville because these little dinky pins, they can bend, the wood can split, and it's, it's just not that great of a design. So what do you say we run some rounds through these things and I'm gonna tell you what I think as I'm shooting them and maybe I'll hand them off to some other people and let, you tell, or let them tell you what they think of them. Oh yeah, razor sharp. All right, so it's said that a good musket man should be able to fire at least three rounds in a minute. Now I'm gonna admit right here, I'm not exactly what you'd call a professional musketman. However, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to attempt to load my historically accurate paper cartridge here 
And we'll just see how quickly I can do it with the Charlottesville. Then I'll do it with the Brown Best, see if there's any main differences. I have taken the bayonet off of this gun because it is a pain to do with a bayonet. Literally, it can be a pain to do if you do it wrong with a bayonet. So for safety's sake, we've taken that off. So I'm gonna pretend like I just fired here. It's going to be prime and load at prime load and fire at will. So we'll just go ahead and we'll act like I just fired here. Probably not gonna get 15 seconds, but I'm gonna try my best to see what I personally can do. I don't do this all day for a living. My paper cartridge is messing up a little bit there. That's kind of a pain. There we go. But yeah, it felt pretty good. My main issue was, is my paper cartridge was kind of binding up on me whenever I was trying to put it, the, put the powder in the pan and when I was trying to dump it down the barrel. So, but yeah, you can see it doesn't exactly take five minutes to load the gun. Let's try out the Brown Bess. All right, same thing with the Brown Bess here. Gonna act like I just fired my round and then we'll go. This is actually loading quite a bit smoother. I think that actually went, to, yeah, let's go to half cock on that. Don't really want to be loading it on full cock. For some reason that paper cartridge came apart a lot better. So, it loaded a little quicker. And we blew that pumpkin in half. So I don't know what the deal was, if it was the paper cartridge or what, but the brown bass actually loaded easier for some reason. Went down the barrel easier. But yeah, as you can see it doesn't take all it doesn't take five minutes to load one of these things, guys. Well pretty heavy. Um I don't know. Let's see what it shoots like. I like it. All right, Caleb, tell us what your thoughts are initially just from hold, going from holding a brown vest to the Charlottesville. What are some things you're noticing from shouldering it, holding it, all that? Okay, it's quite a bit lighter. I really like the front side. That helps quite a bit. Um, really, this one feels pretty good, but from shooting this compared to my brown vest, seems like it hits you in the cheek a little more. Yep, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but go ahead and remember it shoots low. Pretty good shooter. Okay, here's my thoughts. Well, here stranger, catch. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yes, I hate to say it, but the Charlottesville, in my opinion, is better than the Brown Bass. And that's coming from the guy who owns the brown bass and uses it to go squirrel hunting with. Yes. Forget it! Present! Fire! Hey, we both got a hit. But I noticed your pumpkin has got a whole lot more missing out of it. <laughs> well, guys, that's about all we got for you today. So, what are our thoughts? I'm going to go with the Charleville wins this competition. What do you think, Caleb? Yeah. Yep, Charlottesville's probably the better gun. And Especially when it comes to tonight when we gotta go clean them. Yep, and what's funny is is how the, the Charlottesville's kind of the unknown gun out of these two. Nobody makes videos about Charlottesville's. There's a lot of videos about brown besses, not very many about Charlottesville's. So, trust as in always, God. trust in God, keep your powder dry, and thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.